Well, hello again, teeny beans and uh, blue jeans. It's uh, McCowan here. It's Shannon there. Hello, Robert. We're together, but not exactly together. No, it's no. the same case uh, for over uh, 200 podcasts. Yeah, what are we at? About 210 now or something, huh? Yeah. Yep. When we started this um, enterprise, the concept was that at some point we'd be in the same room, like in a studio, in the same room, across the desk from each other. Mm -hmm. And our guests would come to us and they'd sit in the studio, much like they did with the TV and radio program. Do you yeah. we'll ever do get to that? When the pandemic ends in 2027. The hell are we going to, who's going to be alive? Me or you? I, I think the chances of both of us still being here is pretty slim. Seriously? 2027? That's not that far away. It's six years away. Yeah. Come on. How long, how long do you expect to live? Forever. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to tell you I'm not a gambling guy, but I'll bet against that one. Well, you know what? You know, that new sports gambling, you know, maybe maybe you can get that prop bet. Well, I'll get it up on the line okay. and, uh, and make a fortune. <laughs> no, 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 no. Or maybe not. <laughs> no, for sure, I, I win that one. Uh, uh, this guy is uh, one of our faves, and uh, I assume one of yours too. Um, one of the most puzzling firings from Hockey Night that uh, – I've ever seen. Don't say hockey night from Rogers. From well, yes, but but it became it was hockey night. He he did hockey night games, did he not? Yeah. Well, uh, the guy who was uh, between the benches at ice level, telling stories and keeping us all entertained and amused, and he'll continue to do that uh, today. Glenn Healy, uh, now the top dog of the NHL alumni. Healy heels joins us after these messages. Uh, well, uh, joining us is the um, president, chairman, uh, chief operating officer, chief executive officer, and uh, professional bottle washer for the um, NHL alumni. Glenn Healy is with us. I, I don't know what the hell your title is, Healy. Hashtag make it up. Go ahead. You know. yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think you don't care and the players don't care, right? Well, I'm just kind of looking behind you and I'm like, did you get evacuated from your home? You gotta... yeah. yeah. Well, I did actually. I got... like, where are the, like the Emmys, Johnny, what did, what did we get back in the days? We got, remember the, we, we got a, we got a Juno, the Juno trophies. Yeah. We got Junos. Yeah. 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 The trophies are all had... packed. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Junos that that's for my music. Gemini's. We got Gemini's. Gemini's. That's what we got. Yeah. Gemini's. Can I tell you my Gemini story. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, and again, Bobcat clearly didn't win one because there's none on the shelf. He would, he would have. There's on nothing the on the damn shelf, Healy, because I'm moving. So but go ahead, tell your Gemini story. So uh, I'm up for an award, and I'm going against Ron McLean, and I'm going against Brian Williams and myself, and they put me in the third row, and I'm thinking, winner, winner, chicken, chicken dinner. dinner. Like here we go, baby. Like you don't put guys in the third row who are going to lose, right? No, yeah, you do. You put them in the third row because it's six steps and off you go. <laughs> no, no. Do is make sure I don't step on my kilt and trip. So as they're announcing the award winner, I look and there's Brian Williams walking up before they've even announced the winner. And the winner is Brian Williams for the Olympics. And I'm like, something's wrong with this picture. No, so, you, know, you know why you're in the third row is because it's, they want to have an easy shot at getting a, a close-up of the loser as Brian makes his speech. That's or, why you're or, in the third row. You're down in the seat so the camera wouldn't. <laughs> oh, but okay, you he, and you have to be gracious in, in losing. Yeah. And, 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 you know, when I was with the Rangers, right, and we yeah. won team of the year for the ESPYs, yeah. we were in the second balcony. Yeah. And I can remember sitting with all the team and going, we don't have a friggin' chance of winning. We're in the, we're in the second balcony. What are they going to wait for us to come down? And sure enough, team of the year, the New York Rangers. So they had the elevator waiting for us. We went down and I made my way out. And uh, sure enough, walking down the aisle, high-fiving guys. And there's a uh, meatloaf. And I high-fived meatloaf and went, hey, meatloaf, high-fived them. He's probably going, who is that fat little goalie that just high five me? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, Reminds so. me of a story. So yeah. I used to, I used to own a restaurant on uh, across from Maple Leaf Gardens called Gardoonies. 
I was there. Many and um, Meatloaf was performing at Maple Leaf Gardens one night. And the record company booked the entire restaurant for the post-concert show uh, party. And so uh, Dougie Gilmore, who was my partner in the restaurant, he and I go over and we, we sit and we watch the concert. Oh, just one sec, John. Ding, name drop. No, oh, yeah, no, no. I'm, we're going to keep track. Ding. Okay, keep going. Well, I'm just trying to give him credit, it, although it's not due, because he didn't do Jack Poo for the restaurant. <laughs> um, Jack what? You know what I, I meant to say. <laughs> I still haven't got the hang of I can say whatever I want. Uh, yeah, these, don't, don't. These people, things. People I don't want to go down that road. People you know? will be disappointed. Yeah. You know, I can swear like a like a sailor um, the minute the podcast is over. But during oh. we try and keep it at least one of us can family sure. oriented. Anyway, he, he did. So we, we come back from Very the concert. Good. And of course, the place is jammed with all the record company executives and his entourage. And and then the background singers come in. And I recognize a few of them and the band and whoever. And then he comes in. Meatloaf. Ding. And. Now, record company executive standing near me who had introduced himself. And he says, you want to meet him? And I said, well, yeah, sure. You know, I walk, walk. And, and, and he, he says, this is uh, meet Bob McCowan. He's, and, he's, and he was very kind. He reaches out his hand. What do you call him? Meatloaf. Well, no, I called him. But you, what, you call him by his first name? Meat? Meat. <laughs> but I go, yeah. Well, I didn't know. Mr. Loaf. Nice to meet you, Mr. Loaf. I mean, I, I know he has a name, but neither of you two dum-dums know what it is, do you? No, no. And neither did I at the time. I'd be a, I'd be a bat out of hell if I could tell you what his name was. Well, so you didn't introduce yourself and you didn't say hi, a meat, did you? No, I walked down the aisle and high-fived him and said, meatloaf. Yeah. yeah, well, that's okay, but I mean... Yeah, and the only way he would have recognized you is if you were, you know, yeah. wearing number thirty with your name on your back, right? And maybe not even then. No, even if I was like in full adornment, he would not have recognized me. He he couldn't care less. He who was the first? One, who was the first one guy who was up front, which was Mark Messi. He knew him. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not surprising. Yeah. Um, who was the first goaltender to wear thirty? Because you know, for when when I was growing up. Everybody, goaltenders wore number one. I don't know, but I mean, I loved Bruce Gamble. Yeah. Sawchuck wore 30. I loved him. Sawchuck wore 30 in Toronto. Yeah. I just, I, I, I looked at the, the way he played and thought, and then I found out about Bruce Gamble after and went, I love him even more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, just, he lived life like, boom. It, it, he was like meatloaf. He lived life with full throttle down. Uh, but you know, I, uh, when I went to um, when I went to L.A., my you know very first time that I made the NHL, and I was like, I was always number thirty. I don't know why, but always thirty. And I thought I'll be number thirty in L.A. Wow! No. Not to tell me that Rogi Vashon was number thirty and his number was retired. And I don't think uh, Rogatan Roser Vashon was going to take that number down and give it to Glenn Healy from Pickering, Ontario. Just saying, thinking well, out. Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. And so I was 35 in LA and then and then kind of made a, a, a number of changes. I moved on. But, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of guys were one. Johnny Bauer, one of the best ever that ever played. Well, they were all, wait, not, not a lot of guys. All goaltenders wore number one at sure. one point. They never had two goalies, right? Like They well, never they had back. two. But Thank God they got backups. Exactly. But if a backup came in out of the stands, mm -hmm. if the goalie got hurt and the backup came in out of the stands, he wore number one. So well, you could have a team with two or three number ones on it. Well, there was only one number one, uh, one at a time. Well, there was only one at a time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, if you go way back, but yes, no, it's, uh, it's there. It's, I, I still, still remember the shock when, uh, Tony Esposito played for Montreal in War 29, and I was in shock. 
is and then Dryden wore 29 a, a couple of years later that they actually there was one in 30 how do goalies how do goalies not wear one or 30 and this this well, guy's wearing 29 so who do you know who the first goalie was to wear 30 no i'm i'm waiting with you. john do you know no but if you go you'd you'd be able to to figure it out if you go through the you know the lineage of when they went to two goaltenders um and so what was that the early 60s late late 50s you know well, i remember dennis De, dennis De, Dennis DeJordi in Chicago, you know, those types of guys, Hank Basson, you know, there was, I, I don't know. That's a good question. It's, but, but the good thing is, is that we do have enough hockey nerds that will watch this, that we will get a text message or a Twitter feed or, you or something. Have to wait. We won't have to wait. It'll, somebody will pop it up and say, well, Hey, gonna, you, gonna, jerks, you don't know minute. anybody. You don't I'm know Googling anything. it right now. I was sure that Healy would know because he's, he was a former goaltender and he's old enough. Yeah. But Clearly, I was mistaken. So you two guys talk amongst yourselves. I'll find out the answer to this question. Okay, so it, it, actually, we're talking about uh, sweaters and jerseys and whatever you want to talk about. In 2022, um, the NHL has announced that they will put advertising, 100% advertising, uh, on a little three by three and a half square on the, uh, on the sweater. What do you think, Glenn? I love it. Uh I'll tell you when I was with the player association, um, what I tried to get accomplished <laughs> clearly didn't, um, was on remembrance day. I wanted every single sweater for every single Canadian team mm -hmm. to have a poppy on the sweater. Right. And then take all those sweaters and auction them off and all the money goes to the vets. Right. And they, and? Were, they were against that. Even a, a poppy on a sweater. But that was, that was when the Players Association and the league really were at a bit of loggerheads. Is that fair? Uh, what, what did that start in 1967? Yeah. yeah. Actually, <laughs> well, actually, you started in 57, if you, had the, if you ask your old pal, the late Ted Lindsay. Yeah. So um, it, it didn't work. Uh, I thought it would be a great idea. I thought it would be a great revenue generation uh, for, for the, the vets. And mm -hmm. it didn't happen. Um, I do get the you know, kind of that you, you want to make the game authentic. <clears throat> you don't want it to be cheap. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't want Europe. You don't want 67 no. logos on the ice, but a little bit of something is worth a little bit of something. And I like what they're doing. Yeah. The, the, the interesting thing is that uh, obviously <clears throat> when you have a partnership and it's hockey related revenue, 50% will go to the players and 50% will go to the, the league. Um, you know what Columbus sells in its market versus what the Rangers will sell in their market. Uh, I would, I, and I think every team will be thrilled to try to do it on, on an individual basis, but there's going to be a huge gap between, for instance, what the Maple Leafs get and what Ottawa gets. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I'm sitting in my office um, behind me. I've got, about eighty thousand dollars worth of dance trophies. Yes. Yeah. So three girls that uh, did dance and never accomplished anything with it. <laughs> so no, and, they, they, they're uh, better I, people for it, Glenn. They're better people for it. All my sweaters, and I look at some of them and I think, like the World Junior sweater, right? I wore back in like nineteen eighty three. Mm -hmm. That was actually a sweater, really, or the L.A. King sweater. With a purple and gold, yeah, yeah. You look at that one, and or the, the, the just say to yourself, they actually put that on the ice for a game, really. Yeah. And then what we have now is our our big sweaters, uh, but to put a crest on there and to make some money, um, I'm I'm all for it. I I applaud them. Well done. Would you like to answer the question? Yeah, sure. Well, you don't sound enthusiastic at all, so clearly you don't. So never No, mind. I do. No, yeah, go ahead. Come on. No, I'm not going to give it to you now because you Why? have no level of enthusiasm. No, Glenn, Glenn wants to know. Glenn doesn't care. Well, the answer is there is no answer. <laughs> Google cannot give an answer. The closest I can get is the one you mentioned earlier, Shannon, and that is Dennis Terry DeJordi? Sachuk. Oh, yeah. Well, no, but, but Sachuk, Sachuk wore one, and then when, when he came to the Leafs, he wore 30 in Toronto because Bauer had one. 
I understand. But there were there were guys before that. I mean, Gump, Gump Worsley. Um, I think Gump were one. You know, Plant were one. Um, you know, but Rogi Vashon, when Rogi Vashon came up as that junior B goaltender, wore thirty for a while in Who's Montreal. Twenty four for the uh, Leafs. Johnny Don Vashon. Simmons. They're a the great picture when they won the cup. Don 24. Simmons. How do you pick that number? Yeah. Well, it was the next number. <laughs> well, oh. for years, the highest number in the NHL was. So you went 23, 27. 24, and 30? Did you miss seven numbers? 27. Frank Mahovlich wore 27. It was the highest number in the NHL. As a, a, For a skater. Yeah. 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 And, of course, the famous, uh, the famous lore is that numbers – always uh, indicated uh, whether you got an upper berth or a lower berth on the train from Toronto to Chicago, right? Or Montreal to New York. That was always the storyline with, with how important numbers were. Yeah. I'll just give you a little heads up, Johnny. If you were 99, yeah. you know, whatever berth you wanted. You got your own car, forget birth. Hey, uh, speaking, of, speaking of that, have you talked to Wayne since he's going to become a yeah, broadcast yeah. icon? Yeah, I am. I am. Uh, are you consulting? Are you consulting? Well, <laughs> I got fired, so clearly don't follow my act. Um, <laughs> anyone else get fired on this show? Uh, <laughs> shut up, Healy. <laughs> I would say this. Um, no other sport uh, has as the greatness of what he could bring to this. Uh, not basketball, not baseball. Uh, I look at what they did with the Field of Dreams. It was just loving every bit of that and so for for wayne um to come down and make a difference for our sport uh in the u.s because that's where he's going to be tnt i i think it's great for our game and i was there when he came to la i know I, you skated and stood beside him that's as close as you got to him uh and it was just when they went over the uh, the, the number of awards that he had and the uh, the you know, most goals, most games, most this, most that. And the crowd just got louder and louder. And he came out and he stood beside me. And I, I had none of those. Um, fantastic. He changed the game on the U.S. side. Uh, Anaheim came. Florida came. Tampa. Did they win anything? Yeah, they might have won something. Um, they came. Dallas. It, it, it just it totally changed our game. And I hope he does the same thing from a broadcast standpoint uh, because he's, he's that good and that knowledgeable. Oh, yeah. One thing I'll say about Wade, he could tell you back in 1982 in the second period what the shots on goal were when him and Yerry Curry scored a goal mm. and how he scored the goal and who he passed to and who was on the ice. His, his, his mind is that great. So I'll give TNT full credit. Uh, they've got a keeper there for sure. Well, far be it for me to in interject an opinion here, but um, I, 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 you, you won't find a nicer guy in my opinion than Wayne he's always been um, um, just a nice guy humble um, never known him to talk much about himself um, just portrays himself in the right way and he's always been very kind to me for no particular reason clearly uh, but I, what, I, what I question is his willingness to be honest about what he sees. And I don't have the answer to that question. I'll be very interested because I think that's what makes either your, your, your level of a willingness to be honest about what you see or your personality. And as much as I like Wayne, um, he's a pleasant, pleasant guy, but he does, does he have the kind of personality? Well, he doesn't have your personality, Healy. He isn't a funny guy. He won't tell you jokes and make you laugh. And, and, and he, he that can, kind of stuff. though, Bob. He can. Well, and we're going to see whether he does on TV, because, John, you know as well as everybody, as anybody, maybe better than anybody, that there are plenty of guys who, once that light goes on, once that camera starts shining on you, mm -hmm. you, you know, you can't just turn that on you got to be committed to doing that yeah well that, and the thing about wayne is it, it, i i, I want to build on glenn's point about his memory 
Um, I mean, in, in many ways, in 2021, Wayne Gretzky might be one of the best hockey historians I know. Is that fair, Glenn? Uh, that would be completely accurate in every way. And I think if he can, if he can actually bring that to the table and say, here's how much fun this was. Here's what I'm thinking when I see this guy, when I see Matthew Barzell do what he does on the ice for the Islanders. I think people are going to go, wow, this game is cool. Well, I hope so, yeah. Yeah, but he has to, he has to make sure he keeps his energy up. He has to be succinct. I mean, we're, we're, we don't have seven minutes to tell a story. You only have a, you know, 35 seconds to tell a story. And he has to be able to have that quick jab because when he, as you know, and Glenn, you, you've been there, when Wayne gets on a roll and starts to have fun, there, he does have a great, you know, great sense of humor and, and can work it in. I, I think it could be remarkable if he wants to be. Well, I, you know, I've often thought, like when you start looking at the legacy of our players, right? I, I, I'd love to know what Paul Coffey oh. thinks of a defenseman for the Oilers. Yeah. I'd love to know what Bobby Orr thinks of a defenseman for the Boston Bruins. I'd love to know what Wayne Gretzky thinks of um, a current player like a Connor McDavid. And it doesn't have to be negative. It can be positive. It can be, but, but it's going to be something that we've mm. not heard. Hey, we could bring Pat flatly on all day long and listen to that Irish gibberish and get nothing out of it. <laughs> Corey Platts, I love you to death. Uh, but when you, when you start talking about that ilk of player or a Mario Lemieux, right? What it's like that first year to play in the league and what it was like for him yeah. when they speak and when they walk in a room, there's a presence. There's a oh God, yeah. And people stop and they don't breathe and they take a breath and go, this is important. And I better listen to this. So, so to that point, what you do is you, and, and Johnny, um, you've done it best because you surrounded me with way smarter people. You surround yeah. Wayne with other people that can do exactly what Bobcat's talking yeah. about. Yeah. And then from above the light comes up and, yeah. and, and he speaks. And yeah. uh, when he speaks, we listen. To, to that point, the other network in the United States has hired Mark Messier, and there is some irony that Gretz is on one team and Mess is on the other, right? <laughs> um, Mark, 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 I, I have a better sense. I think Mark will be more biting than Wayne will be. Do you, do you believe in that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the great thing about Mark is, um, and, you know, played with him for many years, uh, when he does speak, everybody listens. Yeah. How do you not listen and go, yeah, he's making a lot of sense. And so uh, I, I just think it's a real good place for us to land in the U.S. market. Uh, when we start looking at building the game, we've always tried to build it in the U.S. side. Johnny, you tried it at the NHL level for many, many years. Uh, but now like we finally have two of the greatest players that have ever played the game, two of the greatest champions that have ever played the game. And better than any other sport, you, I, I don't care, football, baseball, basketball, these are two giants in the game. And, and they'll help to grow it. And I don't think they're going to try to blow it up. I think they're going to help to grow it. And uh, I support them. I think they're going to be fantastic. And so if it's TNT or ESPN, whoever came up with the idea, great idea. It's fantastic. Well, Sorry, I wish better I'm, than I'm hiring me, I can too. tell you that, Bobcat. Well, I would have. I would hire you in a, in, a, in a heartbeat. I mean, I think the sh most shocking thing that um, they did with this new ridiculous $5.2 billion deal, of course, besides firing me, was firing <laughs> you. I thought it was an absolute absurd abs thing to do. I was going to say this, and, and in conclusion, and just for clarity, I wish nothing but the best for Mass and for Wayne. And, mm -hmm. and I don't doubt they can do a good job. The point of difference, I guess I was trying to make and probably didn't verbalize it well is right now, the two best former athletes who have become broadcasters of a sense would be who? In any sport? Any sport. Well, and they're on I mean, the same show. Are you, are you talking in Canada? No. Oh, see, I mean, I mean well, I we see them here. Yeah. Tony Romo on who? No. Oh. Shaq and Barkley. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
but well, they and were with, always, and they're trying to bring that. They're, they're going to try to bring that TNT magic to the hockey group as well. Of course they are. Yeah. The difference is that both Shaq and Barkley were enormous personalities throughout their lives, throughout their playing careers, said outrageous things in press conferences, um, had laughs all the time. They didn't have to change much. They didn't have to be somebody different. Wayne has been pretty buttoned down during his, his oh, yeah. post um, playing career and even during his playing career. Um, and mess was a little edgier, but not that much. And they're going to have to change that. Don't you think John? I do. And we, and we actually touched on this when they announced Wayne In fact, you and I talked about before they announced and hired any announcers, we said they should hire Wayne. Uh, but Wayne would have to not use the Wayne speak. Yeah, because Wayne 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 has Wayne has had a, a massive effect on how hockey players talk through generation. Well, same way, and I'm not going to create and stir any pots. We're uh, we're going to find out soon enough. Um, I want to talk you about know, a bunch. One of thing I'll say I'll say Bobcat is when <clears throat> you do stand with those guys that have that ilk, right? Whether it's the Paul Coffees or whoever it may be. Their vision of the game, the way they look at the game, is totally different from the way I, oh, look. I agree. And I would applaud anybody. And if Wayne's the guy who steps up and says, This is what we should be looking at here, uh, who no. is going to diffuse that and say he's he's not he's talking out of both sides? He's not. And so, like, well, I mean, when I first started with Hockey Night Canada. The only advice I got from John Shannon was sit the F up. Cause well, I you, know, you got a bit more, you got a bit more advice than that, but that's okay. It slouched out of my seat and he's yeah. like, sit up. And, uh, and, but Johnny, he, you know, he walked me through it, how and the why, and, and he was incredible for me. Right. Yeah, but it, you're not in, none of us are in the information business. We're in the entertainment business. And you have to be entertaining. And your personality, and I'm not saying it because you're sitting there in the box beside me, but your, your personality fit perfectly sure with did. the role that you were given. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. No question. And, and Shaq did, and, and, and Barkley did. And right now, I'm not sure that Wayne and even Mess fit that category. And that's where they have to get to. I, I don't need to know. I'm interested in his the stories about this guy or that guy, or when I was playing, blah, blah, blah. But you got to entertain me and you got to say it in a way that preferably makes me laugh, but at least makes me remember it. And, and probably when I, I, I look at what has gone on on the US side, um, an upgrade would be an understatement. They're both <laughs> major upgrades. So, oh, oh I, I'll give you that. Well, they're, they're A list names. I mean, you can't get two bigger names, really. Than, um, than those but, two. But like anything we do, surround yourself with good people, surround them with good people, and they will uh, sprout uh, out of the ground and, and flourish. And mm -hmm. I have no doubt that either of them, it's funny when, you know, when Mark, for instance, was, you know, is he going to run the Rangers? And everyone was like, oh, no, gee, he's got no experience. He's never run a team. Really? Bet against him. Everything he's done, whether it's open a hotel or a restaurant or go to New York when no one could win in New York, nobody, 54 years of shite. Guess what? Everything he champions, he champions, he wins, he does it. And so you, you know what, if we don't think he's going to do this, um, don't count me in on the bet against that. <laughs> I, everything Mark does, he wins. I hear you. So we'll see. Yeah. All right. I want to take a break. Uh, we got a couple other things to chat about with you um, here. We got enough time to do this. I guess we have all the time in the world, don't we? We do. Hey, we got on your shelves. You've already moved out. Fine. No, nowhere to go and uh, all day to get there. Taking a school night shirt. What, what a shame. However, the price was right, Healy. <laughs> and I can't remember the last time you sent me something uh, <laughs> back after these messages. We're with uh, Racon Tour and uh, former Target and the uh, head of the NHL alumni, uh, Glenn Healy. All right. We've been a little frivolous and a little off kilter. Um, up you th now, you, you think? 
Well, I want to get, a, I don't want to get serious, but I, that's impossible with Healy in any event. You've been to the Olympics, correct? Yes, I have been to the Olympics. I was in uh, Sochi the, the, the last time that we, we had an Olympic venue, which is, um, can I tell the story about the Olympic venue there? Sure. Yeah. Oh, you know, we fly across the continent, whatever it took, get to my room. And have a shower, right? I mean, to get freshened up. Here we go. I'm about to go out and, and enjoy the pigeon fromage that Russia provides. And uh, so as I jump in the shower, uh, the shower head comes off. <laughs> it's me in the head. I'm like, okay, got a problem here. I don't have a toilet seat on my toilet. I have a bed that's about the size of this computer I'm looking at. And I call downstairs and the guy comes up and he looks at the shower. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Got that. Looks at the toilet seat. Yep. 22 days. He said, I'll be back in five minutes. He never came back for 22 days. So I showered with a hose. I didn't have a toilet seat and the bar, which we, we drank in every night. Uh, I'm shocked. Bar, he never left the bar. Igor was in the bar every night. And if he was asleep, you just reached over and you grabbed the beer and you opened it up and left some money. That was the Sochi Olympics, a, a amusement park that was never opened because they didn't get it ready in time. Dogs that chased you around, shower that was like a hose and a toilet without a toilet seat. And I still look at that and say that was the time of my life. I was going to say, just to have a good time. And we, uh, we would walk in. So you had to wear a bib to go from the area to between the benches. And so another announcer for NBC, short, bald, glasses, figure out who it is. He refused to wear the bib. So day one, I refused to wear the bib. I was like, nope, not wearing the bib. Forget it. And this poor guy who stood there all day long from the KGB, <laughs> day number two, <laughs> uh, you know what? I should wear a bib. And I came around the corner and I had the bib on. I went, ta-da! And that guy, every single day, sent me soup, a sweater, shirt, a yeah. pin. And the guy from NBC with the funny glasses and the bald head never did it, never got anything. So that was my uh, Olympic experience. And it was fantastic. Okay. So uh, would you recommend to your former uh, NHLPA brethren uh, to go to Beijing? Yes, go. Yeah. Your, your windows, you know, it, it, you look at a Connor McDavid. What, what's he ever played for in that country's uniform? World Juniors. Oh, oh, great, great. Well, you did too. You did too. <laughs> a sweater here. Let me go get it. No, 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 no. no. Like, I, I, honestly, like to play like we saw with the Mew and like we saw with Gretzky and like Howard Chuck, like, man, that was special. What we saw in the Olympics when, you know, you had Bob Cole, Joe Sackett, like lovely. Those moments were resplendent, right? Yep. Or I, I love Bob when we were in Nagano and he said, well, we've got five minutes of, you know what? And then five more minutes of, you know what? And then you know what? And I'm thinking, I don't know what he's <laughs> talking about. Again, again, oh. call. And so for me, for these guys, a McDavid, to play for your country, the window is there. Uh, I get the COVID thing. I get there's a whole bunch of issues. Uh, but uh, to me, I would make it happen. Uh, because you can't buy those moments. You can't buy Sochi and what I saw in Sochi, and so do it. Well, we know we know the players want to go. Our players always want to go, and uh, this group is no, no different. It's whether the league is prepared to uh -huh. do a deal. <laughs> no, but you, but you, you and they're inclined. I don't think uh, we had we had Gary on, on so yeah. Long ago. I don't think their inclination is. You know, they may. He, Gary basically said, "We don't care." The players want to go. We'll see if we can help them out. That's well, they made a commitment. They made a commitment, uh, uh, you know, a, a binding commitment uh, in, in extending the CBA. 
to say, yeah, we'll go to we'll we'll go to Beijing, but it has to be. It, and this is where I mean, I know Glenn, you know Gary well too, but it, it has to be perfect for Gary to say yes, we're going. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would imagine all of it is embraced around COVID insurance. Yeah, whether there's any long haul issues with players, um, and that, that I mean, that's something very. If anybody you can bring on your show can come up with that answer, please. They're way smarter than me. Mm -hmm. So. So I would say that that's probably the big issue. But for the most part, like if McDavid wants to play for his country, he wants to play in the big stage. And I think that big stage is something that is going to benefit the fans, benefit the game, benefit the league, and at the end of the day, benefit the player. Can, can you, uh, is, you, you talked about COVID there a bit. Can you explain um, why the Players Association, and I'm I don't, not expecting you to represent them, but can you explain why the Players Association hasn't said to every member Please, you have to be vaccinated. Uh, well, um, that's a really dicey question for sure. I mean, I've got a pipe band. I can't say to the guys in our pipe band, everyone's got to be vaccinated. So uh, why not? Yeah, you can. Well, yeah. I mean, the other members can probably stand up and go, yeah, if you, you don't get vaccinated, you're out. Well, you Great. could have a you could have a you could have a plebiscite. You could have a vote. Yeah. So uh, you're starting to see some of the stories now where, okay, if there's no vaccination, well, then guess what? You're, you might lose some salary. Uh, right. Other sports have talked about losing salary for an entire team, losing games. Right. Four and if it, that's what the NFL is doing. Yeah. So um, that battle will be, uh, is beginning now. Like I'm starting to read the rhetoric. Um, I mean, me personally, uh, uh I want to protect everybody I'm around. And if I can get two jabs and protect everyone around, uh, I'm going to do it. You and, and me both. That's and my I, own opinion. But uh, I, but, but did, months ago and I, but I can't speak for, for guys that, uh, that have different opinions. I can definitely disagree with them. Um, yeah. I can't speak for them. Uh, and I, if I'm the player association, I would, I would want what is best for the wealth and the health of every single player that plays in an NHL uniform. And if that means vaccination, which clearly the science table tells me it is, get it done. Another topic. Um, he was the coach of the New York Rangers when they won the Stanley Cup. When you all won the Stanley Cup. Mike Keenan has a book coming out. We, we know... We know lots <laughs> for those that are listening. <laughs> Ilya is crossing himself at this moment. <laughs> um, look, I always got along great with Mike and, and, you know, he used to come on periodically uh, on the show and um, you know, between gigs, he, he would go and do TV every once in a while. So I had him on both when he was coaching and when he was broadcasting, I always got along with him fine, but I know he had, his his tenure in any place was brief because he wore out his welcome in a big hurry. What do you expect out of this book? Or do you expect anything? Uh, I'm hoping you'd, you'd come clean with it all. That would be fantastic, right? Because that maniacal mind that he had and some of the things he did, whether it was putting Derek Smith and Pete Zezel and talk it into the furnace room of the, in Philadelphia, in the spectrum there, yeah. whether it was uh, what happened in, in New York when, you know, he professed to us that he was not going anywhere. He was going to be the coach of the Rangers. And then when they did an investigation, we lost like three draft picks and four players because he had already negotiated a deal and we hadn't even finished our Stanley cup playoff run. It, you know, I, I'm hoping it's a, an honest tell all book. I, I'm hoping it's not a, uh, you know, kind of a fiction series that some of the players have written. See spot run, see Jack fall, see like bring it and, and tell the truth as to, you know, what you were thinking the way you were thinking. And if he does that, it's a must read because there is nobody like Mike, nobody. 
Um, and, you know, hey, I played underneath him for a year. I was a 15-year-old kid in Pickering. He used to go to the Peterborough Heats. And uh, he told me that I would never amount to anything. And as a 16, 15-year-old kid, I was devastated. And I couldn't wait for him to make the NHL. And when he walked by the room in, in L.A. with the Philadelphia Flyers, I was the first guy to go up and shake his hand and go, can't believe you made it. Here you go. I was going to amount to nothing. You finally made it. Here we did go. You, did, you sit on a de- did you sit on a desk beside him at, at TSN? No, no, never no. there. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, you know what? At the what, what, when you're not playing for Mike, you like Mike. He's a great guy. Yeah. You know that's why Bobcat likes him. But <laughs> don't put skates on, sit in a locker room, and have them sit. And he, and he would sit there with his hands, and he would just work his hair the whole day, and and then boom, launch it like 17 players. So Bobcat, yes, as long as you're not wearing skates and a uniform, you're fine. Oh, I get it. Yeah, but you know, to this I've day, heard the stories a million times, Healy. You know, I would say Mike helped us to win a cup, and I appreciate that. And it's uh, certainly a memory I would never ever uh, want to leave me. Uh, and and hey, our family name's on the cup, and it stays on there forever. And so Mike had a big part of that. I I want to read his book, and I hope it's a a real good story, and and not like uh, Ty Domi's book. Which was <laughs> fantasy. Don't, so, don't go there. Don't oh, I've, oh, yeah. Well, I haven't read Ty's book. I, I don't dis, I dispute what you're saying, but I, I, can, I can give you a long list of books by by athletes, great athletes, great athletes that are just complete fiction. Yeah. I mean, they don't tell the truth about almost anything, but mostly their personal lives. Yeah. And. I understand that. I understand an unwillingness to unveil yourself, you know, to shed the emperor's clothes or whatever and say, this is what really happened. But don't write a book then. <laughs> if you're not going to tell the truth, don't write the book yeah. because uh, I'm, I'm not going to believe it. I am. I'm totally with you. So I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath for this one. And I hope it's really darn good because it would be a must read. Uh, one more before we let you go. Shanahan and Dubas, according to my friend John Shannon, um, have reached the um, end of the rope. Um, no, no, no. They're 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 they're. You, you said they have the, one more year. They have one more year. Yeah, that's right. That's not. Well, the that's end of the, the end of the rope. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. But know, they have one more year. They haven't. They haven't been kicked off the rope. They haven't let go of the rope yet. They still have the rope. But this is the, according to you, their last shot. Some people wouldn't have be giving them this one more shot. I'm not sure I would, with with all due respect, like both guys. But um, where where have they gotten them? Where do you sit on this, Eels? I mean, you're you're in the GTA. You watch probably more Toronto Maple Leaf games than anything anybody else. Um, would you be giving them another kick at the can? Well, I, I think it's going to be this next year moving forward is going to be a very difficult year because you're not getting a, a junior B team in every weekend to play. Goodbye to the Canadian division. You got to beat the Washington Capitals, which, hey, they're at the end of their rope too, but mm-hmm. they're still darn good. But they've had success. You have the New York, well, yeah, Cup would be a good way to start. Well, New York Islanders, which, again, are up and coming and really building. You got the Pittsburgh Penguins, which are a team again that have won cups and are still there, right? You, teams run by by Gino and Sid, but it's still a really good team. And then you got Tampa Bay. So when you start looking at that group of teams mm-hmm. and Florida, who I, you know, can't even believe I'm putting them in the equation, but you, you start playing those teams every second night. And we haven't even mentioned the Rangers. Like th- that makes for a much different uh, year than you had last year, where it was the year to come out and to make a real splash because it wasn't that tough a year. And, and hey, we won a cup in 94, couldn't beat Detroit 
for the life of us. Guess what? San Jose did. Oh, they're gone? Wonderful. Couldn't beat Philadelphia. Washington beat them. They're gone? Wonderful. Okay, that's not going to happen next year. You're mm-hmm. going to go up against some real good opponents, and uh, that team better be built the right way. And you can blame the cap. You can blame the flat cap. You can blame whatever you want. But you better make sure that you don't have a goalie that get beat by a 57-foot wrist shot from Brendan Gallagher. Mm-hmm. Because that was your season. <laughs> so uh, don't don't be first start dodgeball. Make sure that you've got your your team built the right way. Are they at the end of their rope? Um, LT is going to make that decision all day long. Uh, for me, I think they're built pretty good. I like I like the way they're built in some ways. In some ways I don't like the way they're built, and I would change it. But um, no one's asked me for a vote, so I'm on the outside. But I can tell you. Next year is going to be a much different year than last year. Last year was a pass through, was a hall pass. This year is not a hall pass. I don't think he answered the question, but. Well, why don't you answer the question? If they don't do any, if they don't have a really good year next year and they lose in the first round, they're all done. I I don't see any alternative. Yeah. I I really don't. I hate to start questions uh, or answers with if, but let, why don't we see? And, and <laughs> no. why don't we see? <laughs> no, the, the wise words of Glenn Healy. Yeah. Why don't I we don't, see? I don't like, I don't like to start sentences with if. Yeah. <laughs> Get away from the cliff. We know you're not going to jump, but somebody might push you. <laughs> yeah. if my, if my aunt had balls. She'd be my uncle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is hey, what it is. We will see what happens. Oh, well, oh, okay. Thank you, Bob. That's Bob right there. We will see. Yeah. Um, they should maybe put me back on Sportsnet with that kind of <laughs> riveting breakdown of the team. Right? Why not? You know? Don't go there. <laughs> Billy Vanilli. Just faking it. Here we go. Faking it till I make it. Love it. Yeah, listen to John and I jumping in on that conversation about <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to Sportsnet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll kind of let that one go. All right. Um, I don't know why your background is fuzzy. Oh, because um, he, he made this design. He's got the designer. Susie put it up there, and she was t- he was tired of having all the trophies g- glowing, you know, so. Now, here's the deal, okay? So I'm working for Hockey Night in Canada, right? I'm gone for what, – what, what do you send us on the road for, John? Eight 60, weeks? Yeah, 60 Eight days. Weeks, yeah. 10 years, whatever it was. And I came back, and I had a beautiful office overlooking Lake Ontario. I, I, a bunch of dead people playing the bagpipes, which I love those pictures. They're now in my office uh, at the alumni. So they took all those down. They painted the room. They took the lights down, and they moved my desk into the basement, where I can't tell you if it's 5 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock at night. And so I am stuck in this basement with $80,000 worth of dance trophies, because that's what we paid to have the girls dance, which was a complete waste of time, uh, with a piano that's not tuned. Um, I can probably give you a couple notes. So you can see it's not tuned. Uh, and this is no, my- We can't see it all, but go ahead. <laughs> my new lot in life. So no, we I can hear it's not tuned. I preserve the ability to blank myself out so you can't see what- I look like in this basement. Okay. It's not finished. And that they, was the longest freaking answer to a question without giving an answer. But no, no, it's two in a row then. There's two in a row. The last two questions, he won't give an answer. Well, you have the attention span of a gnat. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I love all the trophies behind you too, Bobcat. I mean, at least I've got a couple. Maybe I'll send you this one. You can have this one for. Yeah, another dance trophy. Yeah, I yeah, got a couple. Go. I got a couple. I'll send you. To- oh man. Anyways, um, I've enjoyed it. Well, it makes one of us. Uh, <laughs> you know, we love having you with us, and we thank you very much for your time, as always. And um, you're happy, and uh, and I assume healthy. You look healthy. Today- I was going to say you look like you could still play, but you couldn't play that much when you played. So, oh, that's hurtful. Only on the road. In the, he's in the Western Michigan Bronco Hall of Fame. Come on. I know. Yep. 
Well, you're in the you're in the Pickering Hockey Hall of Fame, aren't you? Is there one of those? A sports Hall of Fame. The only time I got to play at the Air Canada Center was with Paul McCartney. <laughs> well, that's if your boss let you go on the go, go on the trip, right? That was Pat Quinn. He goes, Yeah, you finally got to play at home, eh? <laughs> yeah. It took Paul McCartney coming in to get me to play at the Air Canada Center. <laughs> Mullick and Tire, thanks for coming. Anyways. Is that jersey still up in that arena in Pickering? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. God. It's never coming down, is it? No, no. And then the haircut was just amazing. Uh, I don't know where my mom got the ruler to cut my hair, like, <laughs> straight across, but she clearly had the right ability to cut hair. Um, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it, I was, like, 22 years old before I went to an actual hairdresser. It was all done at home. So Really? Oh, yeah. Well, Tell you what, there is something to be said for the Scots. Yeah. The wee the Scots Scot that are a wee bit cheap on it. No, they? no, no. At, at home, you call it thrifty. Frugal. <laughs> thrifty. Have a moonlicht nicht and nicht. Oh. And we'll, uh, we'll see you down the road. We love you, Healy. And for Ferriance, a sunsy face, so chieftain of the pudding race, Bob McCallum. <laughs> Whatever he said. <laughs> we need um, closed captions. We need closed captions now. Oh, my God. Coming soon. Glenn Healy, back after these messages. Well, our thanks, of course, to Glenn Healy for uh, being with us. Um, <laughs> Is it never, over? Yeah, no, <laughs> it's never over with heels. Oh, uh, never a dull moment either. Um, you got you notice how political he got the last couple of questions, though. He just, you know, for all those times, he always takes a stand. When it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, he can't make a stand. I think he likes Larry too much. I really do. I think he likes Larry Tannenbaum that much. Um, that I, he won't, uh, he won't, I won't hold it against him. No, I know. I mean, but you and I are basically on the same page now. One last, they have one last kick at the can. Well, yeah. yeah. Now I, I, of course, the only point of difference is I like to point out is I'm, I'm not sure I would have given them one more chance, Right. but that's okay. They have, and now we have to deal with it. Um, and I wish them well, but there's no evidence to support the theory that the philosophy that Mr. Dubas has used to uh, put this team together, which is going to be more or less the same team as last year, more or less. Well, no, different goalies. Well, not well, well Jack Campbell and Peter Morazic. Well, but Campbell's going to go in as the number one and he was the number one at the end of last year. Yeah. And he really wasn't. I mean, I know there was a bad one, but he really wasn't. Um, the reason why they lost was he oh no 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 no. the power play uh, the power play evaporated uh, and uh, john Tavares couldn't play so well those are end, uh, i mean I, those are two things i think kyle dubas could stand up and, say, and, and properly say listen if our power play was better and if john Tavares hadn't been hurt you know six minutes into game one I, we wouldn't be we would probably be looking at the team that went to the stanley cup final well if ifs and buts were candies and nuts we'd all have a merry christmas yeah. But I mean, you can make excuses and, and they may be valid, yeah. but the fact of the matter is they have not won a playoff round since this regime has been in place. Yeah. And it's not that I don't like them and I don't respect them. I like them both very much, but at some point you got to produce or, and this is the puzzling thing. What Dubas is, pro is proving to me, at least is that with, with all his assets, He's stubborn. He believes so much in what he has done, which I questioned from the beginning, putting all your eggs in the forwards basket instead of getting, making sure your goaltending is strong and you have preferably two really good defensemen, maybe even three. He went the other direction. He said, we're going to outscore them. We're going to outskill them. We're going to outtalent them. It's been fun to watch during the regular season but torturous during the playoffs. Actually, that, that, that's a really good question. Has the game changed differently? Because I think we all thought, we all thought the, game was, the game of hockey was going to change at the NHL level. The question becomes, has the game changed differently than Kyle had predicted it would change? Because... I don't think it's changed at all. I think it's exactly the same. Well... It, you know, what it hasn't done is it hasn't gone back to 1985. You know, there's one era in my lifetime where goal scoring went crazy, and it principally happened because of one team, the Edmonton Oilers. And, but they had Paul Coffey. They did have a defense. 
And you could argue they had a goaltender. Now, Grant oh, Fuhrer, well, I think was... No, don't get us going on the Grant Fuhrer. Very overrated, but no, nonetheless. Not very overrated. Come no, on. No, he was hugely overrated. Stop. But, um, but the league never went that way. And at the end, it was exactly the same league it's always been. You can be as flashy as you want to be for 82 games or however many they played this year. But when push comes to shove and the playoffs arrive, yeah. you better know how to keep the puck out of your own net. Yeah, that's right. So. And this team never learned that lesson right. and wasn't put in a position to learn that lesson. They underrated the value of certainly defense, maybe even goaltending. Yeah, good point. All right, we're going to get out of here. We'll okay. come back with something else tomorrow. I'm not even going to speculate. Don't, as to do who not. Just sign off. Say goodbye. Goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow.